ready for the word okay now till now we'd been learning those generic terms about the names of god what are those generic terms that we started with elohim yahweh adonai el shaddai sevaoth elion six terms that we finished till now now all these six terms are used multiple times throughout scripture it's not only once that these terms are used these terms are used multiple times like it will be one person's revelation and that will be handed down to a generation it will be sung in songs it will be used in prophecies all of those things it will be repeated again and again and again and then after we finish these generic names of god there are few other names that are mentioned in the bible which is not used a lot of times it is used only once when that person had that particular revelation okay we're going to begin all the way from jehovah jaira we're going to study rafa rohi all those terms that are used only once in the bible that happens when they have one particular revelation about god now if you talk about these individual names there is no end to it like if i start preaching a sermon about every name we're going to sit here for all eternity in fact for all eternity that is what we are going to be doing we're going to see god afresh every single day his mercies are new every morning and every time we see him afresh we will have a new name to call him we will have a new perspective about who god is and we will have a new understanding to go after god amen so i'm not going to try and pick up all the names i'm going to try and finish this series as soon as possible possible as soon as possible because there's more that the lord wants to teach us but this is what i want you to do i want you to learn how i am studying the word and i want you to go and pick up all the other names of god that i did not pick on and study them and pick out your revelations from there and use those names because the bible says in matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 jesus taught us to pray like this he said our father in heaven hallowed be your name amen so that is the kind of prayer that we ought to pray in our personal lives that is got to be our desire that is got to be our drive saying lord in everything that i do in everything that i say in the way that i live my life hallowed be your name may your name be exalted may your name be glorified may your name be lifted high in every situation of my life psalm 113 and verse 1 the bible says praise the lord yes give praise o servants of the lord praise the name of the lord praise the name of the lord so every time we worship if we can make the names of god our object of worship our reason for exalting him then our worship will really have value what happens so often with our worship is that our worship becomes about our problems or becomes about our issues or our challenges or even about what the enemy is doing in our life but if we can exalt the name of god if we can praise his name verse 2 and 3 it says blessed be the name of the lord now and forever everywhere from east to west praise the name of the lord we are here to praise the name of the lord are you ready for the next name genesis chapter 22 and verse 14 the bible says abraham named the place yahweh yire which means the lord will provide everybody scream yahweh yire we want demons to tremble when we use his name amen? amen come on everything every restrictions limitations that the enemy has put over your provision has to break when you speak yahweh yire in this place now if you read this term it is used to it's used together yahweh yire is used as one term it is not used as two different terms like yahweh and yire it is used as one term 
Now this is the new name for Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah was where Abraham had this encounter with God and Abraham renamed that place to Yahweh Yireh. The word literally means Yahweh will see to it. See the provision aspect was because of what Abraham experienced. That was Abraham's experience. But Yahweh Yireh means the, the Lord will see to it. The Lord will take care of it. He is in control. He knows what you need. He knows when you need what you need. He will see to it. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes when you know you have to give up control or you have to go to somebody for some help, you just need one statement saying, don't worry, I'm there, I'm going to take care of it. They may not give you the specifics of how, when, where, through whom, what details, all of those details may not come to you, but just the fact that they say, don't worry, I'm here for you, I will take care of it. That's enough for us to go back saying, wow, I know, I don't care how, when, where, all the details don't matter anymore. That is what Yahweh Ire really means. And this morning, I, I pray that we will, we will go back with that trust that our God is the Ire. He is a God who sees, he sees to it. He sees, he will see to it that my problems, my struggles, my challenges are taken care of. In fact, it was Abraham's encounter with God that gave this new name to this particular place and along with the new name, a new meaning to this entire phrase. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. I'm going to rush through this because I'm sure that most of you have been learning this, hearing this all the way from your Sunday school days, but we're going to get some fresh revelations from the Lord this morning. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes. He replied, here I am. So the first thing that you see is that Abraham was a man of faith. He was a man that walked by faith. And so the Lord tested Abraham's faith. So it was not possible that Abraham can encounter Yahweh Ire if, was, if he was not already a man of faith. You think that if you encounter Yahweh Ire, if you encounter his provisions, his blessings in your life, then your faith will increase. No, no, that is not how it works. When you are a man or a woman of faith, when you do trust God, when you're willing to lay yourself down on the altar, that is when you qualify for an encounter with Yahweh Re. We are trying to move God with our prayers. We're trying to move God with our needs. We're trying to move God with our uh, enormous problems and challenges. But none of these things move God. The only thing that moves God is your faith. Your, your crying for 12 hours doesn't move God. <laughs> your cribbing doesn't move God. Your murmuring doesn't move God. In fact, if anything, it will drive him away. His promises will get delayed. Like the, the murmuring of these Israelites caused a small journey to become like a 40 year long period. Your murmuring and grumbling can only make the promises or the provisions of God be delayed and be pushed into the distant far. But if there is one thing that can move God, that can bring you favor with God, that can please God, that can bring you encounters with God, it is a life of faith. So if you have to encounter Yahweh Ire, you cannot come here with doubts. I'm, I'm not saying that we will not have our questions and concerns. See, faith is something which is in the spirit realm. It's not just in the mind. It is something in the spirit. And that faith has to be so strong that you're going to say, I know this is how I feel in my body. I know this is how I think in my head. But I know that that is not the truth in my spirit. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say that. I am strong. Isn't that a lie? Is the Lord asking you to lie? 
what is God asking you to do? He's asking you to confess your spiritual reality. Your physical reality is that you're weak. Your emotional, mental reality is that you're hurt and you're broken. But instead of saying I'm weak and I'm hurt and I'm broken and I'm, I'm going to be destroyed, nothing good is going to come out of me, my children, they are not going to do anything well and my family is going to be uh, nowhere and my finances is going to be wrecked. Instead of confessing all those things, those things might be your reality, your physical reality. A man of faith will confess the truths of the spirit, which is the fact that I am strong and that's the man that Abraham was and the Bible says God decided I'm going to test his faith see if you don't have faith how can God test your faith come on if you have faith is when God can test it right and here is God deciding at a point of time to test Abraham's faith verse 2 he tells him take your son your only son Yes, just in case you don't know his name, his name is Isaac. Isaac. Yes, the same guy that you love so much. And go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will show you. Did, did you see the specificity of the instruction? Take your son. That son cannot be any son. It has to be your one and only son. And his name should be Isaac. And his uh, quality should be that he should be loved by you. And you need to take him and go to a land called Moriah. And once you reach that land, you need to still look for the mountain that I will show you. And on that particular mountain, you have to sacrifice him, not as any offering, but as a burnt offering. You know, crystal clear instruction being given. Now, that is, that is very important for us to remember that. I'll tell you that in a, in a bit. But, you know, you may ask, how is it possible that, that I can ever do something like this? If God would ask me to sacrifice somebody that I love so much, how is it that I can ever do that? Is it possible? Humanly speaking, is it possible? Emotionally, is it possible? Relationally, is it possible? I mean, the kind of things that Jesus asked his disciples. We may think, okay, this is the Old Testament. You know, this doesn't happen today. No, you, you read your Bible. Jesus said, if anybody wants to be my follower, you have to hate your father, mother, brother, sister, all your family, relatives, all of them leave everything and hate your own life. And then come to follow me. Jesus did not say that following him is going to be an easy process. If you want to encounter Yahweh Yireh, it is impossible without you trusting that God has the better plan and understanding about your life than you have about yourself. The one reason why we are not willing to take a step of faith like Abraham did is because we think that I know that Isaac is the only way out. No, we think that God doesn't know what we know. We do not trust God. In fact, if we give up, if we just, you know, let go of the person, if we let go of the thing that we are holding on to, then it will be very easy for God to restore that person or that relationship back to us. But the more that we hold on to that person, the more that we hold on to that relationship, the more we will lose that person or we'll lose that relationship or we'll lose that Isaac. See, Abraham, when God asked him to give up Isaac, he willingly gave it up. He said, it's okay. God gave him to me. God knows how to give it back to me. If the one reason why we are so clingy to our blessings, so to speak, okay, your blessings may be a person, your blessings may be your resources, your blessings may be... Uh, you know your ministry whatever you do whatever the Lord is probably asking you to give up the one reason why you're so clingy or holding on to those things is because you don't believe God gave them to you if you believe that God gave me this person then you would freely give that person up because you know if God gave me this person God can either bring this person back or God can replace this person in a in a 
quick this thing if you believe that god really brought isaac to your house see if god would have told him to sacrifice ishmael it wouldn't have been easy because he knows that he worked hard to give birth to ishmael it was his in his flesh that he gave birth to ishmael but isaac was not born in the flesh isaac was born in the spirit she he, he was born as a result of the promises of god and that is why it was so easy for him to give up isaac the bible says in philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 that god he is working in you giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him do you remember this from the grace empowerment series god is working in us and what is he doing in us he is giving us the desire not just the desire but also the power to do what will please him what pleases him so if you if you feel that it is challenging for me to do something it's challenging for me to give this up it's challenging for me to trust god why don't you go to god and ask him for the strength he will enable you to to trust him you know the disciples once they went to jesus and and jesus was teaching them about faith and the disciples said you know this is this seems really hard increase our faith increase our faith and we can pray that to the lord increase our faith there was one man he went to jesus uh, for the healing of his son and uh, the bible talks about how jesus told him that he needs faith to uh, to cast out these demons and then this man looked at jesus and said jesus i really believe but help my unbelief help my unbelief we can pray those prayers we can go to god and say god you are the one who is working in me giving me the right desire and the ability and the faith and the power to do what pleases you so help me god help me this morning you know verse 3 genesis chapter 22 and verse 3 the bible says the very next morning abraham got up early he saddled his donkey took two of his servants with him uh, along with his son isaac then he chopped wood for a fire and a burnt offering and set out for the place that god had told him about so so what you see is that abraham did not delay his obedience so often the one reason why we are not able to obey god is because we are still contemplating after hearing from god if this is really from god if this is something that god really wants me to do if this is truly the voice of god and then we question and question and question and question till you are confused your parents are confused your neighbors are confused your pastors are confused everybody is confused around you to the point that you have no clue about what god wants you to do but abraham said no 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 i'm i know if i keep thinking about this i'm going to be losing my head because this is something that he his heart was attached to right he loved this person a lot and and here is god telling him hey give that person up so abraham said no more thinking no more putting my emotions into it i'm going deep i'm going full you know i'm taking this tomorrow morning itself the very next morning he got up and he saddled his donkey let me explain to you what faith takes okay faith takes work faith is not just belief in your heart faith requires work because faith without work is dead the bible says he got up early in the morning which is of course hard work all the young people in the house said an amen, amen. <laughs> i know all of you who don't like getting up early but uh, and and the bible says then he saddled his donkey then he took two of his servants who he paid for along with his son isaac he convinced isaac to join him then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering early in the morning he's waking up and he's chopping wood has anybody tried chopping wood it's not easy this guy he's going to church he's going to worship and the bible says it began with a lot of hard work he began chopping wood and he prepared himself then the bible says verse 4 and on the way on the third day of their journey abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance wait a minute what do you what do you notice here what do you notice see the bible says in the initial 
instruction that God gave. Go to Moriah. Over there, I will show you a land. Show you a mountain where you should do this, right? But here is Abraham in Genesis 22 and verse 4. It says, on the, on the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and he saw that place where he wanted to do this, where he was supposed to sacrifice in the distance. Now, this is, this is what it takes to walk by faith. Now, did God say that I'm going to show you that place? Yes. But Abraham had to keep his eyes open and he had to keep his spirit sensitive to, to catch focus of that place where God wanted him to go. He had to catch that. It did not come with more instructions. God didn't appear at this point and said, look over there, the third mountain from there. No, no, no. He had to exercise his faith. He had to keep looking to see where will his spirit connect to. And the Bible says, as he looked up, he saw, as he looked up, he saw the place in the distance. He saw there was no word from God. God didn't come and tell him, no dream, nothing, no revelation. But he kept his eyes open. The problem with so many of us is that we are looking down. We are looking on ourselves. We are looking at our circumstances. We are looking at our struggles. We are looking at people. We are looking at our servants saying, do you know where we are going? Do you know where we should be doing this sacrifice? We are looking at everybody else rather than looking up. And here is Abraham who kept his eyes looking up. And at one point the Bible says he saw from a distance. He saw and he, as soon as he saw, he knew this is the place. This is the place where I have to go. And then he told his disciples, his servants, he told them, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there and then we will come right back. Verse 6. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders. Can you imagine? The guy is carrying his own cross. It says that he, he had to carry the wood for his own offering. He's going to be sacrificed on this altar, right? While he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together. The Bible says he made Isaac carry the wood and all, all the hard things and then Abraham he carried the knife and he carried the fire in other words what Abraham did is three days back when he left from home he cut the wood out and he set the wood on fire and for three days he's sustaining that fire because God had given him an instruction saying it has to be a burnt offering you remember that specific instruction that it has to be a burnt offering he knows that it may not be easy for me to create fire on the top of a mountain so he made fire and he's carrying that fire can you imagine three days long journey to sustain that fire when they did not have petrol kerosene and all those advanced fuels that we have they did not have a gas lighting system or none of those things they had to carry the fire from one place to the other and this guy he is taking that fire along with him. He's protected that fire with everything to make sure that he's able to reach up on the mountain and he's able to sacrifice it there. And again, back to the trekking. These guys are trekking up. Yeah? And it's a hard walk. He has to, you know, carry all these things. Isaac is carrying wood. And the Bible says, verse 7, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, he replied saying, Yes, my son. And then Isaac said, we have the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Isn't that a logical question? It's a real question. We have the fire. You took care of all the surface things like the fire, the knife, the wood, all of that. But the main ingredient of an offering is a sheep or is the cattle that we are going to you know, put on the burnt offering. And where is that cattle? Where is that sheep? And then um, Abraham's reply. This is Abraham's reply. 
It's very powerful. Verse 8, it says, God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. Abraham answered, and they both walked on together like nothing, nothing to worry about. Like Isaac, when, if I was in Isaac's place, I would say, yes, yes, dad, I understand you're trusting God and all that. But still, be logical. You know that sheep can't climb such a huge mountain. You know that they can't be up there. We, we have to figure out something. If we're going to catch something or if we're going to take something, we have to figure it out now. We cannot go up there and hope to get this right. And, you know, Isaac could have argued that Abraham could have been, uh, you know, been swept away by the question that Isaac brought. But Abraham just said, no, I know that God will provide. God will see to it. God will take care of it. I know the God in whom I have trusted. He will provide. He will provide. In, in fact, everything that you see in Genesis chapter 22 was so prophetic about Jesus. It was very prophetic about how Jesus is going to lay down his life for you and for me. In this particular verse, it says God will provide a, a sheep. If you read the original root language, it says God will provide himself a lamb or a sheep for the offering. What he was saying is that God himself will be our offering. He himself will be our sheep. He himself will be our provision. You know, those of you who are worried about the fact that you do not have a particular provision in life, it can be finances, it can be uh, any area of your life that you feel you do not have. The Lord says, hey, I have given you my own son. What else do you need? That is the ultimate provision that can be made for you. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, by his divine power, God has given us everything that we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, whom Jesus, through coming to a place where we understand who Jesus is, what God has done for us, by his divine power, he's made everything. Don't come to the pastor to say, Pastor, will you pray for me so that I have an anointing for a different, nothing. You have everything that you need to live a godly life. Yes, there are different levels of anointing and graces that will be released from time to time, from season to season. But everything that you need for living a godly life, it's already been given. It's already been given. Now, all we need to do is to grow in our understanding of what has been given. Here is Abraham and Isaac. They understand what has already been given and they are journeying towards the utilization of that provision with that firm trust that it is already provided, it's already taken care of. Verse 9, the Bible says, when they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and he arranged the wood on it. Can you imagine he has still not looked around for a ram or a lamb or a sheep or a cattle, anything? He's not. He is just going by instruction what was the instruction for him instruction was i'm expecting you to sacrifice your son purely by instruction he goes up he prepares the altar and he puts his son isaac on the altar and he ties him and he laid him on the altar on top of the wood the bible says verse 10 and the bible says abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. Abraham, he loves this guy with everything. He was a child born in his old age. When he was 100 year old, you can imagine, right? The kind of love that he will have for that child. This is the promise of God. It is not something that Abraham fought and contended, nothing. This is the promise of God. It was born out of his close, faithful walk and relationship with God. Do you remember? that Abraham walked with God and then God one day came and told him that I will bless you with descendants and then he sacrificed more, he gave more, he honored the three people that came into his house and did all that and finally they said, next year, this time you will have a baby. And with all of that serving and growing in his relationship with God, he received this Isaac. 
And now Abraham has reached that place where he's like, God, you, my relationship with you, my trust in you, and my faith in you is greater than my love for this Isaac. So he picked up the knife and he was about to kill his son as a sacrifice. And how did he do, do that? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17. It says it was by Come on somebody, say it loudly. It was by It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. It was not by his willpower or because of his emotional strength or none of those things. It was by faith. It was by faith. How much faith do you have? If you want to encounter Yahweh Yireh, you need to be walking by faith. You need to be living by faith. You need to be activating your faith. Activating your faith would require for you to deactivate some other senses of your life. It would require for you to deactivate your logic. Now faith is not against logic, but faith is of a different dimension. You understand what I'm saying? It's like saying, okay, as long as we are on this earth, we will have to, you know, you cannot, you, can, you know, it's normal to think that if you jump off a building, you will fall down. Am I right? Why is that? Because there is a law of gravity. So as long as you are on this earth, that it makes sense. You cannot jump off a building. But what if I'm not talking about something on the earth? What if I'm talking about up there in the space? You jump off, nothing happens to you. You don't fall and hit your head anywhere because there's no gravity pulling you down. You understand? The same laws that are a reality here is not a reality in another dimension. So if you have to walk by faith, you have to disconnect. I mean, in this dimension, yes, this is logical. Yes, this is rational. Yes, this is emotionally too hard, all of that. But when you switch on to your spiritual capacity, in the spirit dimension, there are things that are possible for you. There are things that you can do with the strength that God gives you, which is not possible in physical dimension. And some of you are going to tap into it this morning. The Bible says it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham who had received, he had already received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Even though, even though God had told him that Isaac is the one, Isaac is the son. See, God had told him that Isaac is the guy through whom all your descendants will be counted. Okay? It's not through Ishmael, it's not through other sons, it's through Isaac that all your descendants that I'm planning to multiply, all of that is going to happen through Isaac. Even though God had told him that, Abraham was willing to lay down his Isaac. The Bible says, verse 19, are you ready for verse 19? Man, this is so powerful. The Bible says, Abraham reasoned. Reasoned. You know, I'm, I was talking about logic. Abraham reasoned. Abraham rationalized in his head that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, when Abraham lived, when did Abraham live? Before the days of Elijah, Elisha? Before the days of Jesus? Has he ever seen somebody raised back from the dead? I mean, if you're living in the days of Jesus, you still have an Elijah, Elisha who brought people back from dead. But during the days of Abraham, come on. Who was his role model to think that if I kill Isaac, that Isaac can come back from life, come back from death? That is what faith requires you to do. Faith requires you to be writing history in your generation. Faith requires you to expect things that nobody else has done. So often what, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what logic does. Logic does, what logic does is, okay, if this worked for Pastor Kachi, if this worked for Elena, if this worked for Pinky, then it should work for me. No, no, no. That's not how it works. It says, even if it didn't work for them, 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 it is going to work for me. Because I trust in God's word. 
I trust what God said that it is through Isaac that my descendants will be counted. And he decided, I am going to write history today. I am going to decide who will be the first person to be raised back from the dead. And it is going to be my son because I am laying my son down on the altar and I am going to kill him. He had decided. And it was, he was going in that kind of radical faith. No wonder he encountered Yahweh Ireh. Some of us, we, we can't even sacrifice our, you know, our time. We can't even sacrifice that, that one thing that God asked you to disconnect yourself from. And we are expecting favor, blessings, all of these things from God. And here is God asking you to give up your Isaac. And Bible says, Abraham's trust in God's word was so much that he was willing to expect historical blessings from God. Abraham was willing to expect God to write history through his life. Can I read this out? It requires radical faith, unwavering trust, and a willingness to sacrifice everything to encounter Yahweh Ire. Let me say it once again. It requires? It requires? Radical faith, unwavering trust, and a willingness to sacrifice everything to encounter Yahweh Ure. You understand that God has so many layers about Him. He has many layers. Do not just be satisfied with seeing Elohim or Yahweh. If you want to experience Yahweh Ure, there are things that you will have to give up. There are things that you will have to lay on the altar. It requires that kind of a radical faith. And I believe that this morning as you're hearing this word, some of you are blossoming in that faith. This faith is blossoming in your spirit. This, this faith is growing in your heart. That there will be, with, with the word will come the power, the grace, the desire, the ability to do what pleases God. To, 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 to pursue him with that kind of radical faith. To, to trust him with that unwavering pursuit. And that willingness to sacrifice everything. Right now for Abraham, Isaac was his everything. And so he had to, he had to lay Isaac on the altar. The Bible says in verse 10, And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. Verse 11, it says, At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham replied, here I am. You, you see the highlight on the word at that moment? At that moment, at that point, the voice did not come when he decided in his house. The voice did not come when he disconnected from his friends. The voice did not come when he, um, you know, decided to his, make his son carry all the wood up on the mountain. The voice did not come when he tied his son. The voice did not come when he, you know, brought the fire. The voice came when he took the knife out to kill his son. He was just one step away from killing his son. That's when the voice came. And he said, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham replied, here I am. Verse 12, don't lay a hand on the boy. The angel told, do not hurt him in any way. For now, I know that you truly fear God. And you have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. So Abraham had to be sensitive. You should understand that, you know, sometimes we can be so overzealous in our pursuit of God that we forget to hear a different instruction that God gives on the way. This is why it's necessary to walk with God every day, every moment. Can you imagine what would have happened if Abraham would have being insensitive to God at that particular moment. He was a man of faith, all of that. But that particular moment, if he would have missed hearing God at that particular moment, he would have lost his one and only blessing. He would have lost his Isaac. It required him to walk in obedience in every step of his life. See, so many of us, we are living on yesterday's revelation. 
we are living on a revelation we got from our grandfathers grandfather who passed it down wrote it down in some book saying this is what our family will do this is where we will no wait a minute you need new mercies new revelations new word from god every day every hour every season every second every moment you need to be sensitive to god's voice to know is this is this really what you want me to do god can i take the next step i'm going to do this i'm trusting in you let me go ahead the bible says that at that moment the word came and the word stopped abraham from doing that are you ready for the verse 13 this is amazing then abraham looked up and he saw a ram caught up by its horns in a thicket so he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son wait a minute this doesn't make sense the angel did the angel come and say hey look at that place there is a ram over there come on why did why did abraham name this place yavire because god provided a sheep in that place in place of his son isaac right isn't that why god, abraham named it place yavire but god didn't provide in in the sense that god did not tell abraham look over there you will find a ram over there no it was abraham who looked up you see that term again come on are you with me on the way to moriah the bible says three days later he looked up and he saw the place in a distance at this point the word of god came don't kill the boy that's all and then the bible says you know he looked up he didn't look down on his son he was not looking again at his circumstances and his challenges he looked up and as he looked up he saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket so in other words this ram was already there this ram was already provided this ram was caught by its horns means that it could have been a few days by the time before abraham came here this ram would have already been there and the bible says that he saw this ram when he looked up and so this morning my prayer is that each and every one of us that are looking down and looking at ourselves and looking at our situations and waiting for god's direction his provision his plans the the lord will divinely enable you to open your eyes of faith and look ahead look up and see what god has already provided for you you don't need another pastor another sermon another provision to come your way it is already provided it's already there if you will just look up if you will just start looking ahead looking further look into your destiny your provision is already waiting for you there the angel came to stop abraham from killing isaac the angel didn't tell him what to do the angel didn't say instead of this you know kill no if i was in abraham's place i would have said thank you angel and i would have come back down i would have gone back home happy that my son is back but abraham said no i came here to worship i came here to give to god and i'm not going back without giving to god and he said and he started scanning with his eyes of faith he started looking further lord make a way i cannot go back without building an altar in this place and the lord provided for him to build an altar and the lord gave him what he needed to give it back to god that was god's provision that was god's provision and then the bible says verse 14 and then abraham named this place yahweh ire which means that the lord will provide to this day people still use that name as a proverb on the mountain of the lord it will be provided on the mountain of the lord not in your house not in your comfort zone but on the mountain of the lord you know you remember god's word to him go to moriah and climb the mountain that i will show you and there you know you're going to do an offering here is abraham both those decisions the decision to pick that mountain and the decision to identify that provision he took it by faith he did not take it because he heard a booming voice from heaven 
You know, we are all waiting for that booming voice from heaven, that angel that will come and say, go here, do here, you know, give this much money or sacrifice this lamb, do all of that. No, 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 it will not happen. You have to use your spiritual intelligence. You have to use your eyes of faith and you have to look at your destiny and you have to do it by faith what the Lord has asked you to do. And as you walk out by faith and as you do it, the Lord will reveal himself to you. The Lord will show himself to be your Yahweh Re. And then the Bible says he named that place Yahweh Re, saying this is the place. This is the God who provides for all my needs. This is the God who makes way for everything in my life. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. And this same God who takes care of me. This is Apostle Paul speaking. He says who takes care of me. He will supply all your needs according to his from his glorious riches which we have which has been given to us in Christ Jesus now you should understand again all of these terminologies you should study them very clearly it doesn't say which will be given to you it says which has already been given to you it's already made for you when Jesus died on the cross he he has made the ultimate provision for you that Jesus was the ultimate provision there is nothing else that can that we can receive that is greater and more important than Jesus himself and Jesus has been given to us on the cross and now the Bible says that this God that takes care that took care of Abraham that's that he, who was a Yahweh Ray to Abraham who was seeing to it that Abraham has no need on that mountain, that same God will supply all your needs. All your needs. Physical needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs, relational needs, every need you have. He will supply all your needs according to His glorious riches. If you're able to open your eyes up, if you're able to understand what has been provided for you, if you're able to just... just you know, trust what God is doing in your life and just look at Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 16, for this is how God loved the world. What did he do? He gave his, <laughs> he gave his only begotten, the one and only son, Jesus, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Everything that you, you, you think you need is hidden in that two words, eternal life. Do you need health? It's in that eternal life. Do you need wealth? It's in that word eternal life. Do you need relationships? It's in that word eternal life. Whatever you need is in that word. It says that God loved you and me so much that he was willing to give up his only son to become our provision. You and I should have been on that altar dying because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But somebody else took our place. We got off the altar. We got to live a life, a new life here on the earth. And Jesus was laid on that altar and Jesus died for you and for me so that we can experience the divine provision that God has planned for us. The Bible says, verse 17, that God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. That is why God sent Jesus into this world. This morning, I know that we may be in different places in our journey with God, but if you haven't still encountered God as the savior, if you haven't still encountered Jesus as the Lord of your life, I want you to invite him in. I want you to take this step of faith and say, Jesus, I want you to be Lord in my life. I want you to be my Yahweh Re. I want you to be everything that I need on this earth. I don't want to trust in myself. The more that I've trusted in myself, the more I have messed up. But this morning, I want to trust in you. I want to believe you. I want to obey you. I want to walk after you. Even if it requires for me to give up everything, I'm willing to grow in radical faith, unwavering trust, and a willingness to sacrifice everything. You know, we live in a day and a time where becoming a Christian is very easy. All you have to do is, you know, put a sign-up card saying, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But Jesus 
He said, you want to enter into the kingdom of God, you have to follow me. Leave everything and follow me. And the disciples, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, what do we do, Jesus? We have left everything. We have left our families, our money, our property, everything that we, we had saved up, our parents had saved up. We, we said no to all of that and now we are following you. Lord, what do we do? Do we have anything in return on this earth? And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you walked with me, you have all that you need. Everything is hidden in Jesus. Apostle Paul said it like this in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. If God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, for our blessing, for our provision, how much more will he not give us everything else? Everything else is just bonus. It's just surplus. You know, where, you know when you buy something, you get accessories free along with that. Like if you buy a phone, you get a phone cover or chargers or you know, cables, all of that free along with the phone. But you know what we do? We, we are trying to buy a phone so that we can get the cables. No, 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 the cables is an accessory. You go for the phone, the cables will come. The blessings will come, the provision will come. If you pursue Jesus, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added to you. Can I tell you a few things that will be added to you? Now this is Abraham that we are speaking about. Okay, if you, if you know, we have spoken so much about Abraham in this series already. Last, last Sunday, we were on Abraham. Elion God. Elion God, when, when Melchizedek blessed him in the name of the Most High. You would see so many blessings. El Shaddai, he was blessed in the name of El Shaddai God. God appeared to him in Genesis 17 and said, I am El Shaddai God. And uh, so much revelation that Abraham carried about God. And every revelation carried a unique blessing, right? But with Yahweh Ire, the Bible says, now he is confirming that blessing once again. Read Genesis chapter 22 and verse 16. This is what the Lord says, because, because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, now... I swear by my own name. Now, wait a minute. If you read the previous text, you would see that Abraham just gave God a different name, right? Now, God is showing up and saying, hey, I swear by Yahweh Re. I swear by that name that you just gave me. I swear and I say this about you that I will certainly bless you. Then I will multiply your descendants beyond number. Like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. All because you have obeyed me. Now, now wait a minute. Didn't God promise the same things in Genesis chapter 12? 15, 17, but now God says that, hey, all those blessings could still have been limited if you would not have obeyed and, and followed me with radical faith. It would still have been limited. We're thinking, God, you already spoke through the prophet. You already gave me the word. And why is it that I'm not able to experience the fullest potential, fullest blessing? Here is God saying, hey, because you have obeyed me, there was a condition attached before you obeyed me, I gave you a promise. Then I asked you to walk up with me. After you walked with me, I look back and I say, now that I have seen your life and you've obeyed me, you've, you've kept the faith and you've walked the journey, now I certainly will bless you. You will receive this in its fullest potential. So often, the problem with so many of us is that we are okay with the 30% blessing that we get. You know, when we receive Jesus, when somebody laid hands on us, when... But there is more than what we have ever, ever dreamt of. There is more that God wants to offer us. If we will just pursue God, if we will just trust Him this morning. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if the Lord is asking you to give up something, if the Lord is asking you to give up somebody, if the Lord is asking you to give up some resource, some relationships, whatever they may be, would you just bring it to the altar and lay it down? Just... As hard as it may be. Because, because the Lord is disconnecting you from your physical 
world and he is connecting you to your spiritual capacity. It's possible. You may think it's not possible, but it is possible. The Lord says it's absolutely possible for you to do that. But if you do that, then what he is going to bring out of your life. I want to read this once again before we finish. Genesis 22 and verse 16. It says, this is what the Lord says. Because you have obeyed me and have not even withheld your own son. I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. And not only will I bless you, but I will also multiply you. Not only will I multiply you, but your multiplied descendants will be able to conquer your enemies. Conquer their enemies. And the Bible says not only will they be multiplied and not only will they conquer. The Bible says and through your descendants, the nations of the earth, the nations of the earth will be blessed through your descendants. All because you have obeyed me. So Father, I just pray and I bless your children this morning. And I speak multiplication upon all those things that they are willing to sacrifice. If it is their money that they are willing to give up, let there be multiplication over their money. If it's their relationships that they are willing to give up, let there be multiplication upon their relationships. If it's their dreams, their ambitions, their hopes for the future that they are willing to give up, let there be multiplication upon upon those same dreams. Let there be multiplication upon those ambitions let there be multiplication upon those hopes in the mighty name of Jesus and Lord I speak a grace right now that not only will they multiply but there will be a power there will be a supernatural grace that will help them conquer their enemies their descendants will conquer their enemies there will be no enemies that will be too hard for God's people There will be no enemies that will be too hard for the children of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak supernatural capacity into your spirit right now. And I speak that the same things that you're willing to give up, the same things that you're willing to let go, that the Lord will use those same things to be a blessing to nations. All nations on the earth will be blessed. Because of that one sacrifice that you made. Dear Abraham, your giving up Isaac is not only for your blessing. You giving up Isaac is for the blessing for your generation and for the nations of the earth.